Amen. Hallelujah. I'll just sing one short song and then maybe we'll allow the Spirit of God to speak to us this morning. Bible says he's the author of the word of God. Amen. I thank God for your life. I thank God for how far the Lord has brought all of us. It hasn't been easy. There has been ups and downs. There has been many, many difficult moments. In your personal life, if you are called to give a testimony of your life, I believe you have a lot to say. We cannot have words to thank this almighty love and God who has brought us this far. Brothers and sisters, sometimes I look at my life and say, Lord, why have you loved me so much? If I look my, at my life, all what I can see is that a loving God, a holy God, loving a wretched man like me, a man who is bound with shackles and chains by the enemy, but he came down from his throne, his holy abode, to release me and to release you, to break those shackles and those chains. Brothers and sisters, he has done a lot. Money cannot buy. Wealth cannot purchase what the Lord has done for you. And his mercies shall endure yes Lord ever faithful ever sure yes his mercies and his mercies shall endure ever faithful of the almighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your beloved Son, Jesus. And His mercies and His mercies shall endure ever faithful and sure. my hope
the name of Jesus. We're committing a service into your hands. Lord, I empty myself and I say, the Holy Spirit, take control. Speak to your precious children. You die for us. Let your word come to strengthen us, to empower us, to know the purpose and the importance of your love. Then all that adulterated word, the word has a sharper than any two-edged sword. Only offensive weapon that destroys the enemy and his entire world. Take control. Let your word prepare your children. Let your word prepare your children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Somebody didn't clap for Jesus. I say put your hands together for Jesus Christ. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you Father. Holy Spirit take control. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank the Lord for your life, for my life, and for how far he has brought us as his, as his own people. The Bible says that when Jesus died and ascended into heaven, he is standing at the right hand of the majesty of the almighty God interceding for you and I. That tells how much he cares for us. Jesus knew, and once upon a time he prayed that, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will deliver them from the enemy. He also prayed for Peter, that Peter, the enemy, had wanted to sift you. But I have prayed. I have interceded on your behalf. So that when you are able to stand, you will continue also to strengthen your brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, God knows how wicked the enemy is. We might know the enemy, but we might not know him the way God knows him. And Bible describes in John 10 verse 10, he says that thief come to steal, to kill and destroy. These three things are so important, dangerous to the human life. That is what this man called Satan carries. And this is what is attacking every human being, whether you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. The enemy has a battle in your life. His aim and his objectives is to make sure that you will never have the taste of the heavenly kingdom. His objectives and his aspirations are that you, a child of God, will look down on the importance, the heaviness, the, the broad and how wide the word of God is. He will do his best for you to look down on the very word of God that God himself says, my word shall never pass away. He has done that to many people, as you know in the scriptures. He limits the standard of God in their lives. And it doesn't matter the, the measure of your maturity in Christ. It doesn't matter your experience and how holy you are. The devil don't care about that. He is in for business. And the devil never gives up. As long as we are living as humans, my dear brothers and sisters, we will be attacked in every situation. The devil has no respect for whoever you are. He has no respect for our God. He blasphemes God. And he brings that. Somebody is talking, please. I want the room to be quiet and listen to the word of God. Amen. He has come. The devil has come. So that you and I will lose focus on God's word. But brothers and sisters, look at our Savior. How come? Satan can go to him after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Tempted our savior. The devil has no respect. His imagination, imaginations are cruel. They are wickedness. Bible calls him 
the father of lies, lies, a deceiver. He is a serpent, he's a dragon. His mission is to destroy and continue to destroy. His mission is to wear us out, wear us out continuously so that a time will come in your life you would say to yourself why all these things when am i going to come out that is what the devil is doing but jesus says it's only those who can stand firm to the end those who, who overcomes shall have their way to the tree of life my dear sister my dear brother i don't know how you look at the enemy i don't know how you underestimate the enemy he's in for destruction the Bible has given us weapons. He has given us the armor of God. Through the whole armor of God, what I've learned is there's only one offensive weapon. The rest are all for protection. The helmet of salvation is for your protection. For your salvation. The breastplate of righteousness is to keep you in tune with the purity and holiness of God. The belt of truth is for you, a child of God, to walk in truth in every minute thing you do. Truth. Because the truth will set you free. If you look down on the truth, you are destroying your own life. The readiness of the gospel protect us and bring us the peace of God. It takes us to the presence of God. The shield of faith. Bible calls it to, to extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. These are all protections so that the enemy will not have chance in our lives. But what about the sword of the spirit? That is what we use to destroy the enemy's works. That is the offensive weapon. And I'm telling you, that is the only, one, only thing the devil fears. But he will make it his mind and his point. To discourage you. To disvalue the word, the word of God. To think the word cannot do it. Thank God Jesus set us a great and everlasting example. He says, it is written. It is written. Three times it is written. Hallelujah. Brothers, God wants want us to share a word this morning. To know how this enemy of our soul is operating. You know, there's nothing, nothing that can exchange our soul. The most important thing is that we don't have to die with our lives still entangled in the worldliness and sinfulness. Because after death and after this life, your, your destination is set. I want to encourage you, stand firm. It's not that we scream, it's not that we terrify people. It is about what Jesus has done. Jesus himself won us. It is not us, it's from the scriptures. He says that make every effort. Fear God. Do not fear the enemy who killed the flesh. But fear my father who killed the flesh and the soul. Amen. Amen. And he wants us to make every effort. Even if your eye will cause you to sin, plug it out. Jesus is serious about our salvation. How are we handling this grace? Has it become a lances of doing what we want? Are we always claiming and quoting Ephesians 2.8 and saying that we are saved by grace and it doesn't matter what we do? Brothers and sisters, where comes this gospel? That tells people that it doesn't matter what you do. Once you are saved, forever. From where? Hallelujah. We must rise up. Because there's no one. Even all the false prophets are preaching that false prophets will come. So where, who, who is a false prophet today? It is up to you and I to test the spirit. Pray in the spirit. And seek God's guidance to purity and holiness. This is the gospel of Christ. And this is why he died on the cross. To eliminate the works of the enemy. So that sin will not have power over us again. So that the bride will not be contaminated. Just imagine. If you want to get married. Those who are preparing to marry. If you have a bride or some woman you are dating. 
in a religious way, in a, in a Christian way. And all of a sudden you find out this woman is looking at other people, sleeping as well, and still want to be a bride. Would you be happy, church? You will go crazy. When Joseph learned that Mary was pregnant, what was his reaction, church? What was Joseph's reaction? Bible says secretly he planned to divorce Mary. Get rid of Mary. He has gone somewhere to sleep with someone. But in the night, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Said, Joseph, what Mary is conceiving is from God. It is the Holy Spirit. You see, you don't want your bride to contaminate herself with any spot. We are the bride of Christ. Many of us take matters into our hands. This year, I prayed a prayer to my God. And the Spirit of God reminded me. I said, Lord, if there's anything inside me that even I do not know, let the greatest of your rebuke come upon me. It's better for you to judge me now than to stand up before you on judgment day. And God will say, no. I want to be judged now. Let me know my limitations and cry unto you. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, the judgment of God. I know many people don't talk about it because it sounds like you're scaring the people. But Jesus spoke massively about this judgment. Bible says in Matthew 25, like the goats and the sheep. He says that those on the left will go to everlasting torture. But those on the right will go to everlasting life in heaven. We shouldn't hide it from anyone. So, I'm giving my life as an example. Check your life. Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Judgment is about to begin in the house of God. Church, judgment is about to begin in the house of God. John 15 verse 1 to Paris says that, Jesus says, I am the vine. My father is the vine. I, 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 I'm the vine. You are the branches. My father is the gardener. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it can bear more fruit. But any branch in me that does not bear fruit, my father will cut it out and throw it into the fire. We are all connected to the, the vine. We are branches to the vine. But God is expecting us to bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. I don't know your limitation. I don't know where you are falling. Please take this serious. Because about your eternal salvation. You are saved. But you must confirm your salvation and your election. Make it sure. By being obedient to your Savior. Don't let people tell you that it is not your salvation is not based on your obedience. I don't know. But I give glory to God that nothing will change what God has let us know. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, many as Jude says, has taken the grace of God as a lances to sin freedom. I was reading an article. The guy says, we must relax in grace. <laughs> We must relax in grace. Hallelujah. This is not a time to relax. When your enemy prowls like a lion. The title of today's message is that be self-controlled and alert for the enemy of your soul prowls like a lion seeking someone to devour. First Peter 5 verse 8. This is what we want to talk about shortly. The enemy is prowling. I remember in my life, the Lord gave me a vision, a revelation when I was back home. In this vision, I was asleep. And I heard a loud noise. And I woke up to see, watch my window. I saw this lion that West cannot describe. And the fierceness of the lion. He wanted to break that bogra proof on the window and come in. And I know it, if this lion gets into the room, 
even my bone, you can't see it. He was roaring. A loud and, you know, making a lot of noise trying to break in. So when he was not able to break in, he passed the other side to come through the main entrance. But in the dream, he wasn't able to come in and my dream ended. I believe God was telling me how Satan is fiercely seeking to destroy and destroy and destroy. You know, brothers, let us not make a great mistake. Self-righteousness and self-confidence always can result in pride. We must submit to the Lord. The Lord show us how to pray. Say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's a prayer of humility. He cited the example of the Pharisee and the task collector. Self-confidence and self-righteousness is not good. Just put your trust in God and say, Lord, you are my helper. There's nothing good in me. Without you, I cannot be who I am. Amen. So, Ephesians 6 verse 10 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Not part of it. Full armor of God. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, our day-to-day -day life, the life at home, the life at work, work places, the life at the shopping centers, everywhere that we find ourselves, the life in the church, those struggle is not against flesh and it's not against blood. We are not fighting against physical beings. Bible says that by against rulers, there are rulers who are ruling the world spiritually, who are instigating people to continue to sin and you know, destroy the creation of God. We are doing what? Bible says that our struggle is against those rulers. And it's also against the authorities. Those who hold the authority in the spiritual realm in this world. And against powers of this dark world. Bible says this world is dark. Why would we want to live in a world filled with darkness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says that powers of this dark world. The world is controlled by a dark world. An enemy who lives in darkness. And the Bible says, and it's also against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In the skies, under the sea, the marine world, under the ground, in trees, um, uh, uh, in mountains, in, in, in rocks, wherever all these fallen angels are hiding in there and they are spewing evil, violence, disobedience unto all humanity. So these are the forces we are fighting them with. So Bible clearly tells us that there's a battle, there's a struggle going on. We are not free. We must stand firm and fight every day in the battlefront. If we don't put a full armor, your enemy can penetrate. He can strike you with a weapon. Brothers, this is serious. I know you know this particular verse, but maybe we are not taking things serious. I'm telling you. Those who are fighting us, we cannot see them. But God has given us these weapons. Amen. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. When you don't put all this full armor of God, when the day of evil comes, you cannot stand. What are the days of evil? You can use this mouth to sin against God. The days of evil. He will ask you to gossip. He will ask you to slander. He will ask you to lie. He will, some of the sins very light, easy to commit. But the consequences is so fearful. All liars will have their share in a burning lake of fire, brothers and sisters. So Bible says that, so that if the evil time, evil, evil days come, if the evil comes, you'll be able to stand. How much time we spend digesting to the word of God, praying 
every blessed day asking God to come into our life and help us. Brothers and sisters, we shouldn't let loose. Our enemy meant business. He was able to send a legion of demons into one person. 12,000 demons living inside one person. This is how wicked the enemy is. I'm telling you, if you're a Christian and you let loose, the enemy can possess you. If you don't look after yourself and you live anyhow, you are creating room for them to come in. The entire Bible wants us as children of God not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Hallelujah. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand on your ground. To stand on our ground, we are asked to put on the full armor. It is not physical armor. This is all spiritual things. Guard your mind with the scriptures. Meditate on the scriptures. Speak the scriptures. Leave the scriptures. Let love consume you. Be prayerful. Confess your sin every day. Humble yourself. Submit to his will. And then stand firm. Then with the belt of truth. As I've already explained. Buckle around your waist. The breast of, breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. With which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. When you go home, take your time. Read prayerfully. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to give you more understanding to what God is talking about. We are not free as we think we are. The fact that you go to your work and come home safely and you get your food and everything in the fridge and everything at home, it doesn't mean that we are at rest, at peace. We are living, we have, we have been told this morning that this world is a dark world. Ruled by all these forces of darkness. They never sleep. They never sleep. Because they are spirit. Amen. So the word of God. That is the only way upon that we use to fight. All the rest are protecting us. So constantly use the word of God. Every situation. Speak. Confess the word unto every situation. You might think it's not working. That's how sometimes we feel because when we are consumed by some anxiety, some kind of distress, brothers and sisters, we, we, we feel that uh, I, I, if I speak it, and what happened? It destroys the enemy because they are unseen. And that's what the Bible is saying. You, the sword of the spirit. The word of God is the most powerful weapon. And you are the devil's enemy for your information if you do not know. Once you have determined to love Jesus, you are the devil's enemy. Unless you are lukewarm, unless you are not too serious, you just want to come to church and socialize. That one, the enemy knows that, oh, I won't bother about this uh, person. Because he never take anything in the church. And you know, the devil knows, although he doesn't know anything you are thinking, he knows your maturity, knows your level of faith and stuff. And he knows your your, 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 your vulnerabilities, your weakness. He always comes to that side and always keep on hammering there so that you become frustrated. I'm, I'll give up. There's no way. And you send people into your life so that they can deceive your mind to take your faith away from the word of God. He does a lot of things. He's your greatest enemy. Our enemy, brothers and sisters. In our homes, wherever, even in the church, he's our enemy. He's wishing that we all destroy. Please, let's come together and fight this this monster of our lives. Amen. We must always be ready and alert and prepare for battle. Bible says finally we should be strong. Not in anything, but in the mighty power of God. We must be strong. You see, there are few things. Let's see these three or four things that the devil uses again. One is your feelings. I have learned much about this thing. 
because we are human, sometimes our feelings drag us so down, brothers and sisters. And sometimes our life is being driven by our feelings. I don't feel spiritual. I feel down. I don't feel this. I don't feel this. But the word of God has got nothing to do with your feelings. You know, but this is a weakness of every human being. Second is our emotions. We are learned that the, the devil injects thought as well. Certain things, if you have done and you are sorry, he will come back and accuse you and accuse you and accuse you. You have no idea. If he was able to accuse angels, deceive them, to miss that beautiful paradise of heaven, then he says that he doesn't want anybody to go back there. He accuses so strongly. The accuser of the brethren. But the Bible says, woe unto us, because he's here with us. He's no longer in heaven. The Bible says, woe unto us. What does that mean? It means he has taken great anger. Revelation 12. When you read verse 12, going, he has taken great anger against the bride of Christ, against you, a child of God. He has taken great anger. Why? He has missed his eternal home. And now he's awaiting his destruction. And you want to get there. Brothers and sisters, after Jesus commending that angel of Ephesus church, he says, I know your deeds. <laughs> there is nothing in our life that Jesus doesn't know. Whatever you are doing, your faith, your health, your perseverance, your, your obedience, he knows everything. Nothing is hidden from his sight. But Jesus is after completeness. Completeness. Because he gives us strength to do what we are expected to do. And that's why Philippians 4.13 says we can do all things through him who strengthen us. So he rebuked that angel that he has done so well. But he has forsaken his love. Something is wrong. This is what, if I think about it, even as a pastor, it brings me down. I lie down and I cry. No wonder the apostles and the disciples asked Jesus, who then can be saved? Brothers and sisters, thousand to hell, one to heaven. We have watched that testimony. That is how it is. And Jesus comes in every day to point that little thing in your life so that you will be careful from now. Work it out. Stop looking at others. Look at yourself. This is me. This is what I'm doing in my life. Although I stand to encourage the brethren, I have to examine my life. You must. My dear sister, my dear brother. He loves us. Those I love, I discipline. That's what Jesus said. That's why he visited the church. The church is an example of this last day's church. It doesn't matter the 99% we have done. He's expecting completeness. Because he's the one who gives us the strength. He will give more grace to us when we humble and cry unto him. If we don't care about our salvation and materialism is consuming our mind, the things of this world, the carnal mind cannot please God. But those who are led by the Spirit, they have crucified the flesh. They have forsaken this world. Brethren, it's not easy, I'm telling you. What we are passing through in these last days, brothers and sisters, it is not easy. The devil tempted our Savior. If our Savior were to not to pass that temptation, we we'll all end up in hell. That is why death has come upon us because of Adam. Now, God's mercies and grace are so big, he doesn't want, you know, nothing we think or imagine can change his plans or what the Bible has said. He's coming back to take his children home and to destroy the sons of disobedience. This world, according to 2 Peter 3, verse 7 to 9, says, this world is stored up with fire of destruction. It's stored up for destruction with fire. So the Bible says, if all this thing will be destroyed, what sort of person are we to be? We must live a holy and godly, pleasing life. Brothers and sisters, 
the enemy of our soul. The enemy of our soul. His tactics, his vows, his schemes, plans, his motives and his weapons. He has come down to us with a great anger. He's angry with us. The pride of Christ. So we must stay alert. Hallelujah. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a lion looking for someone to divorce. Stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. Remember that our Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering. The Bible says the thief's purpose is to kill, to destroy, and to steal. Today, people want to even evangelize. The devil hinders them. Today, the enemy is attacking the whole world. Today, many places, they have bound Christianity. Today, many people are not allowed. I was talking to this friend, as I told you last time. In Iraq, about 4 million Christians, it has reduced to 1 million. Many have given up their faith. Many are being killed and persecuted. All these things are prophecies. Brothers and sisters, let's come back to our senses. Remember that the day of fierceness, the day of destruction is so close. And Jesus has visited millions of people telling them my imminent coming is so close. Church, arise and begin to work out. Stay alert. Don't think I'm okay. If Jesus comes, I'm going. That is, that, that, that is a deceiving thought. I'm telling you. No. Pray to God and ask him for his guidance from the Holy Spirit. Perhaps he has been convicting you so many things you don't listen you dwelling on one or two things. It is not like that. The devil asked permission to sift Peter. But Jesus pleaded. When you see you are growing in spirit, yes, he will not allow. He will attack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have learned about this for the principalities, authorities, and powers in higher places. Rulers of this dark world, spiritual wickedness. <laughs> spiritual wickedness. We have learned about them. These are the forces who are fighting us. And if you want to go to heaven, my dear sister, my dear brother, <laughs> if we want to be part of the Lamb's Supper, then it's about time. Let us come back to our senses. Be content where God has placed you. Thank God. The secret of 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 8 says, Rejoice always. The Bible didn't say that when you're going through trials and when you are sad, when you are miserable, don't rejoice. Bible says always means always, all the time. Irrespective of situations. Because it's a way for... In fact, in the human terms, it should be impossible to rejoice. When, when, when you think something is wrong, you've lost a loved one, your job to collapse, your marriage is not mending well, this, this. Instead of rejoicing, you'll be thinking and be anxious. And, well, why, Lord? Why, why? That's what. But the way point is, rejoice because God is about to do something with that situation. Keep on rejoicing. The devil become confused. When you close your mind to all those circumstances, your Savior does not wish that you perish. One thing I know from God, the Bible says it takes pleasure. Say pleasure. Pleasure. When a soul is saved, the Bible says that it brings pleasure to the heart of God. The host of and the whole heaven rejoices. This is how much he loves us. He didn't create us to destroy us. God, knows, God has not called us to be destroyed. He has called us to be saved through his beloved son. Jesus Christ. Amen. It takes an effort to stop in your busy day and pray. If you don't make effort, it will be business, 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 business. If you don't make an effort, it will be school, 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 school. If you don't make an effort, it will be dollar, 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 dollar. You'll be dreaming about dollar and everything's about dollar. It takes effort to bring great more room and vacant in your life to pray. Not to allow all these things, 
Only in your life. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you think it will come, when, when is it going to come? You are expected to do something. It takes effort to stay longer in prayers, to seek the face of your father, to cry in tears and call on him in the days of trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we are all busy, brothers. The world has made us busy. If I don't go, how can I do this? But let us also remember that his word never falls to the ground. Isaiah 55. When you read from 16 going, it never falls to the ground. He said, never will I leave you nor forsake you. Bible says that the pagans run after this. But you, child of God, seek first. Your first ambition is to be heaven and to live in righteousness. That's what we are asked to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will take effort for you to spend time with your children. Instead of pumping them with toys, with some of the things in this world, that doesn't bring Christ-likeness into the children's life. Take time and teach them about Jesus. Whatever toys must be to divert their mind or to straighten their mind to the way of Christ. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he grow, he will never depart from it. Thank God for Deacon Cooper's children. I'm not saying to praise him because those children, if I visit their homes, all what they watch is about, even if it's cartoons, is about Christ. And the children can preach to you. They pray. We should train them. They are our generation. If we pamper them with worldliness, they will grow and reject Christ. Because that is a fight. It's a struggle against them as well. The next generation, the children we are bringing up. It's not just I have a child, I'm happy, I take them to nursery, I take them and so what? Have you obeyed God? Those children have been entrusted to you. You have a responsibility. It's a command from God. You didn't need and, and, and form that children in the womb. He did it. He brought them out. And he has given them to you to look after them. When they are going wrong, I love him, I love them. You cannot correct them or live at them. You fight for them when indeed they are wrong. What are you doing? It is about her future or his future. The children are so important in our brothers. Jesus himself prophesied that in, there will come a time children will be disobedient to their parents. Today, if you like, just check the children from ages six going. When you talk to them, they talk back to you. When you say sit down, they take time. Others have not even a single respect for their parents. It's a prophecy. What are we doing? Is it, is it only children? These are my children. These are my future. What future are you talking about? So that when you are old, they will give you dollar to eat. Is that all? No. I entreat you, mother and father. Those children are precious to God. If a child dies... He's automatically being transported to heaven. The father cares for them. So let us care for them. It's a struggle not against us, but against them as well. If their mind is polluted with worldliness, they will grow up with it. This allowing Jesus in their lives. This morning, we may feel weak, but Jesus is always strong. He will strengthen us in our faith. Hallelujah. You know, we just want to take a step first, a step of faith. If you want to do something, start it. If you want to be more prayerful, start it. Some of this thing comes with an effort from our side. We have a part to play. God will not obey for us. He has asked us to be obedient. And he has asked us to be holy. We have a responsibility. So when we take a step, the spirit of God comes in and strengthen us, empower us to accomplish them. I'm saying this because some of all of us, we fall weak sometimes. I want to encourage your life. Dear child of God, you matter to God. Amen.
Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. I will give you some few tips. Before I do that, I will take you to some few scriptures and then we will end. Continue another time. When I began the message, I tuned your mind to the temptation of Christ. And I want us to not to forget that. Because the tempter went to our Savior to tempt him. You know, there's no temptation that has seized us that will be more than us. God has given the devil a limit. So, you know, don't allow the devil to tell you that this thing will never ever go. I have faced similar problems in my life before. But the devil keeps on bombarding minds that it will never be alright with your life. It's a deceiving spirit because he's a deceiver. He lies. He's a mastery of lies. When he told Jesus he would give him all the glory of the earth, turn the stone into four, throw yourself from the pinnacle, and the angels of God will carry you. He was just telling Jesus Christ to accept whatever you want to give him in this kingdom because he is ruling in darkness. And you want to also entrust all the things you have to Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, some of these things, we don't take close look. But today, if somebody even want to uh, 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 offer you some billions of dollars just to offer some few lies, remember how much you have suffered in your life. And somebody want to offer you just one million just to say a single little lie. You will never turn your back. One million. You will never be the same. This is what was done to Christ. He said, worship me, I'll give you the glory of this world. But we see ourselves contaminated in so many areas. Today, wrong is called righteousness. Something right is called wrong. Something wrong, we have classified it as good in the human mind. We have created our own gospel and our own God. Was the God of the Bible wants us he took that little life of Ananias to die in the presence of the church. But then, if we want to mark around with this wonderful God, for all what he has done for us, he says that if you are not faithful, he is faithful because he cannot deny himself. Amen. Jesus didn't accept. He didn't. But he quoted the enemy. Today, I pronounce that upon your life. That any time you are going to stress, just come to the scriptures and tell that enemy that it is written that you poverty, you are not my portion. It is written that you demon of lust, you are not my portion. Bible says that I should not look at a woman lastly. Bible says that I should not be drunkard. So just tell the devil it is written. That's it. Close your mind. Although nothing is going to happen physically. But you don't know how much damage you have done to the enemy. The offensive weapon is the word of God. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. So that was what Jesus used. And the devil flew away. Genesis 39 tells us that Potiphar left everything in the hands of Joseph. Now Joseph was well built. And handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. The devil have took notice of your faith in Christ, your perseverance, your trust in God. You have completely, I mean, deny yourself. You have given your life to Christ. But the devil has taken notice. He said, come to bed with me. Come and let's lie. Come and let's go to the pub. Come and let's sleep around with girls. Come and let's gossip. Come and let's be angry with our brothers. Come and let's hate. All these things. <laughs> that is how it is. Come. Come to me in bed. Now look at uh, Joseph, a handsome and well-built man. Who refused such an offer. Today some of us even run for it. 
They don't give us the offer, but we ran for it. Joseph was also a human being like us. He has that feelings inside. The feeling for ourselves, men and women, he has it. You see, somebody says that when we sin, we chose to sin. It's not be oh, it's the devil fought. Eh? Otherwise, on the judgment day, God will say, oh, it's the devil who disturbed you. Come. It's not the devil's fault. It's our fault. So it takes a deeper searching in your heart. A deeper communion, intimacy with God. Before you can see your own mistakes. I'm telling you, otherwise you can't. If you don't humble yourself, you might think everything is right. I'm telling you this, brothers and sisters, take it. Go deeper and ask, Lord, search me as David prayed. Psalm 139 verse 23 to 24. He prayed, Lord, search me. Although I've searched myself, but I know there's some unconscious sin in my life. This girl was shown after, after the bride is gone, a, a, a vision. I'm just thinking to come and show that vision to the church. You will cry. You will cry. He mentioned some top, top pastors that he saw. You will cry that many Christians were not able to make it because they were unaware. The foolish uh, uh, the bride. Matthew 25 verse 1 to 10. There was no Holy Spirit in them. They were sleeping when the bride came. They didn't see, so they have to go and look for the word. It was too late. The guy says many were asking, what happened? Brothers and sisters, I don't know. You don't know. The Savior himself said, watch what I say to you. I say to all men, watch. For you do not know when the Son of God will come. We don't know. The only thing we can do is fix our mind on him every blessed day. And this thing is not a one-time business. If you don't train yourself in fixing your mind on Jesus, your mind will be on the television forever. Your mind will be fixed in magazines, on pornographies. You'll visit the website in some unaccepted areas, adult areas. You will disrespect your parents. You will not love them. You think they hate you because you have not humble. You have not searched yourself. It is the Pharisee who says that, Lord, I am right. I'm not like Jonathan. I'm not like Cooper. I fast two days a week. I pay my tithe. This is the habit of many people today. They have failed to examine within. And this is what I'm praying day in and day out for the entire church for my own life. It is about time to search our lives. The Lord has given me a vision to search my life. I'm telling you. And I'm, I'm crying every day. I don't want to miss the job, the work I've done. I don't want to go to burn in hell where there will not be father, son, relationship, son, a, a mother, friend, work, life. Not for one day. Not for a thousand days. Not for one million years. For all eternity. This is what we're talking about. I want to encourage your life this morning. I'm telling you, the enemy meant business. He can make you vulnerable. He can make you confused and take your mind. But it takes a deeper, deeper intimacy. Deeper understanding, humility. Bible says regard others better than yourself. That is God's word. We must learn that. As we do that, the Savior comes into our life. He has visited so many people. Those people are so, not all of them are, I, I would say, humble. But sometimes he goes and shows them certain things. Remember the Ugandan pastor. This pastor was unique. This pastor does a lot of miracles. He confessed that, I don't know what I've done. But through fasting and humility, the Lord opened his eyes. The Lord visited him. And he began to reveal his heart. The thoughts. <laughs> I was listening to this pastor say, go back to the last one month <laughs> and recollect all the words you have spoken. The things that came out of your mouth on phone, at home, elsewhere. And see whether they are all perfect without any unwholesome word. When the pastor says that, my heart struck me. Hey, 
David says, I will put a string on my, on my map as long as the evil one is before me. If anyone want to walk with the Lord and without putting this padlock on his map, he can never be a child of God. We have a fight to go. There's a battle going on. We must help one another, pray for one another. Love is Jesus. His nature is love. And love is supreme instrument that he uses. We must love. In the vision, the Lord told me that love people. Love. And I took it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Joseph refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in this house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I. I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? That was the word the young man said. It comes from the word of God. Joseph even has no, those days, where was the Bible? The Bible was not written. The Torah wasn't even yet written. They have not any guideline there. But look at this man. Today, we have him as an example. We have others as an example. And that is why God is bringing the judgment. Amen. Amen. One day, he went into the house to attend to his duties and none, and none of the household servants was there, was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hands and ran out of the house. There's a saying that says, if perseverance fail, something uh, force must apply. If the devil try, 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 look at her, look at her, do this, do, and you don't do it, now he's going to force. Amen. But remember that the, the real lion, <laughs> hallelujah, the real lion is the lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. He is the one who covers us. The devil is just roaring like a lion. I'm telling you, he will scare us. David came out of nowhere to point to Goliath that I don't, I don't care. I'm not scared about whatever you are doing. I know a God who was with me when I was looking after my father's sheep. I killed a bear. I killed a lion. So I will not allow you to destroy the name of the almighty God and the army of the almighty God. For 40 days, the Israelites fled from his presence, Goliath. This is some of the habits of Christians today. When we go through problems, we're looking for pastors, ministers who can prophesy into our lives people who can raise the dead whereas your own life is not pleasing God what about if he gives you that miracle and your sin is still there you are believing so much some of you are traveling to many places I've heard it I pray for you you have heard so much and all that you have heard in this church will be brought into judgment it doesn't matter if you are forgotten the Holy Spirit is our reminder so God has spoken to me and you. No one is exempted. So listen to the truth because it is not those pastors who will set you free. It is the truth of God. Simple truth. Just accept the word of the Savior. Don't put it down. Don't place your faith in me or in pastors. We are only stewards and servants. Whom he uses us. Today many are taking glory. People are running to them. They feel big in their shoes now. Because all are coming. Because there are miracles. When the Uganda pastor said, but Jesus, I've, I've performed many miracles. Jesus said, no, I wasn't the one behind you. Because things were in your life. Jesus says, many. He didn't say few. He said, many false prophets will come and deceive many. Not few. Many visit the scriptures and know what the Bible is talking about. It's not few. Those who have ears, as Jesus says, 
Let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Those who overcome, they will have their way through the tree of life. And I pray this morning that our lives will be redeemed. Whatever that is falling apart in our lives, the Savior will come to us. We will humble ourselves to him and allow his spirit to help us. Isaiah says, seek the Lord whilst he may be found. He cannot be found after this life. This is the time to seek him and refrain from our wickedness. May the almighty God close your eyes, church. Let us be on our feet. Pray a prayer of humility right now to your Savior. The word that has come to all of us. Say, Lord, take control. Bible says you have loved me with an everlasting love. You have drawn me closer with your loving kindness. Help me so that my name will not be blotted out of the book of life. Help me to live the life you have called me to live. Help me to continue to become a conqueror and victorious because of what you have done. May I never fear the threatens of the enemy. When he accuses me, I will go on my knees and cry unto my Lord. For God has not called us to destroy us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves at this moment. Father, we eliminate every principality, powers of darkness, powers in higher places, evil spirit, wickedness in the spiritual realm. We render their work fruitless. We, we refute every attempt and every attack, every vices. We demolish in Jesus' name. We pray that our life will continue to be a consistent life that will lead a holy and purity for you. Holy Spirit, Bible say you help us in our weaknesses. We confess this afternoon that Lord, help us to strive to enter through the narrow way. We come against any principality, any enemy attack against our children, our homes, our spiritual life, our finances, our marriages. We cancel right now in the name of Jesus. May the fire of God consume every attack upon the children of God. Satan, lose your grip right now. May the blood cleanse each one of us. May our names continue to be in the book of life. May the Lord reveal our heart to us. We pray for an attitude of repentance. Thank you this day for your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, church. God bless you.